Hey, Erin. So, something big happened on Monday. I don't know if you heard about it. It has something to do with space. Not that that would help you guess at all. The Landsat 8 satellite launched on Monday. And actually, I'm kind of surprised more people haven't been talking about this. Because... People seem to go crazy over the last shuttle launch from Atlantis, but then again, that was people going into space. Then just the other day, there was an asteroid that hit Russia, and people seem to enjoy that. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I just enjoy hearing about this. I don't know. I know we haven't even done introduction videos yet, but I wanted to talk about it because it's a big deal to me. So that's what I'm going to do. On Monday, I went to work, and I waited three hours. I was waiting for the launch of this satellite. And it being a NASA facility, I wasn't the only one waiting, thankfully. So like I said, Landsat is a satellite. It's a series of satellites, a generation of satellites, actually. There have been seven previous Landsat satellites before this one. The first one, Landsat 1, was launched in 1972. The previous one, Landsat 7, was launched in 1999. Right now, we get images from 5 and 7 still. If you're wondering what happened to 6, well, it was the only one that was not developed by NASA, and it never achieved orbit. Now, each satellite takes images of the Earth's surface in 150-mile-wide swaths. 4, 5, and 7 orbit the Earth every 99 minutes, which means that they can take images of the entire Earth's surface every 16 days. And actually, 5 and 7 orbits were offset from each other, meaning that they can really get full coverage of data of the entire Earth every 8 days. Each satellite has sensors on board, which will send back different data for whatever wavelengths it captures. For example, Landsat 8 has two new sensors on it the operational land imager, which collects data from nine bands, and then the thermal infrared sensor, which captures two thermal bands. Now, when I say band, think of a rainbow with different bands of light in it. Each band detects different wavelengths, so band two detects blue light from wavelengths 0.45 to 0.51 micrometers. Band three is green from 0.53 to 0.59 micrometers. Not only can these sensors detect visible light, they can also detect wavelengths that we can't see, such as near infrared, which is band 5, and thermal infrared, which is band 10. Now you're probably like, okay, that's great. What's the point of knowing all of these bands for the government and industrial companies, the military, even civilians have used Landsat data before. They've used Landsat images before, and they can be used for a range of different things. I mean, we can use them to detect global change. We can use them for agriculture, use them for mapping, for geography, for coastal studies. The mapping part is actually where I come in. Some of this stuff is what we use at work, and we can use these images and put them into computer software called ArcMap. We can use each band to detect certain things. For instance, the blue band that I was talking about earlier, it can distinguish between what is soil and what is vegetation in an image, or even different types of vegetation. So say you wanted to find maple trees and pine trees, a pine tree is going to reflect a different wavelength than a maple tree. So that's something that you can do with this. Even you know, thermal infrared helps you to see things like soil moisture, things that you would normally have to go on the ground to that site in order to find out what it is. So I think it's really important for people to understand what some of these satellites do because they do so many different things. I mean, when you look at Google Earth now, there's so many people that use Google Earth, and Google Earth is so cool. I mean, you can zoom right in on things, and you can basically, well, I mean, it's Google Earth. You can see the world if you want to. You could take a tour of the world. And even beyond that, things that aren't even really something that our brains can put into something visible, that I, something that I would have to put into a map in order to make the data visible, but satellites acquire data like that also, like temperature data or precipitation data, and then allow us to put it into a map so that we can see what the temperature is going to be like tomorrow or how much rain was in 
Alabama on Friday or something like that. I think if people just really knew how important satellites were, they'd be way more into this whole Landsat 8 launch and everything, but, you know. And, uh, the frame is still there. Empty frame. Still there. Just hanging out.